Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for our meditation on this Reformation Sunday is uh, the text from Romans, chapter 3, the, particularly the 23rd verse, where we heard just a little while ago, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift. Let's pray. Lord, as we come before your throne and think about the, the gift of your grace and being justified as we one day will stand before you, may that sink into our hearts, not just as comfort on the day that you take us home, but throughout our life that we might live in the freedom that you have given us in Christ Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. When you think of the word justified, what comes to mind? In the culture in which we live, when we say, well, they were justified, it can mean just about anything. Oftentimes it means that they have an excuse for doing what they did regardless of if it was right or wrong. Well, they're justified in doing that, and then they'll go, because. Or sometimes children, when you ask them, they'll kind of make it appear that they were justified for doing this, that, or the other thing because of whatever reason they come up with. Well, as human beings, we can justify behavior to one another, and we may or may not get away with it. But as we think about justification on this Reformation Day, this banner, by grace you are justified through faith, as one day we will all stand before God. Justified in a theological sense, in a Christian sense, as we think about standing before God, there's nothing that we can say about our behavior that justifies us as we stand before a holy, sinless, pure God. In fact, we'll be left speechless. We are justified before God by grace. And what that means is God declares you and me and all believers innocent, guiltless, despite the fact that we know as well as he knows that we have sinned. We've fallen not just a little bit short, but way short of the glory of God. So how is it that we can be justified? We can have that peace, that freedom that we heard in the, the lessons this morning to live our life not just when we die and go to heaven, but right now, right here in Norfolk, Nebraska, knowing that we are justified. Not because of anything we've done, but totally because of Christ Jesus. God declares us now innocent, guiltless, totally absolved of our sins because of faith in Jesus Christ who has set us free. Free from condemnation, free from guilt, free from the worries that there's just one more thing that we've got to do before we make God happy with our life. So we think about that, and I, and I know this is a verse we've all heard throughout our life. As we think about this, sometimes it takes a while for it to sink in. I meet Christians who've been in the church 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90 years of their life, and it appears that it's yet to sink in. Even though we fall way short of the glory of God, the eternal gospel has us focus not on what we've done or are going to do or think we should do, but on what Christ has done in the past when he died and rose again, but he continues to do to this very day through every single believer, through you and through me and through Christians around this world who heard the good news. This mystery of faith, as it sinks into our life, actually sets us free to live by God's amazing grace in a variety of ways that are intended not to bring the attention to ourselves or our congregation or even our denomination, but to God alone. It's intended to bring glory to Him because, you see, it's ultimately not about what we do. It's about the incredible work God has done and continues to do through all who believe, through you and me as we administer His grace 
in its various forms. 1 Peter 4, verse 10. I like that verse. Peter reminded Christians long ago, and it's a reminder again to us today, each one of us, Peter said, should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Oftentimes we only think of grace as the means of grace, baptism and the Lord's Supper, and certainly we receive God's grace there. But Peter expanded it. And I believe Luther did too as we take a moment this morning to reflect on his life and what he had to say. Peter said, administer God's grace in its various forms. Have you thought about that? Sometimes it seems that we forget that what we do in life, regardless of our occupation, regardless of where we are from being a youth to being retired, everything we do can very well be an avenue of God's grace to work through us to the lives of others. Just as we heard the little children sing this morning, wasn't that a form of God's grace? As they said, behold, behold, with such enthusiasm and such joy. Well, if you are a Christian, and I can't just assume that because you're here this morning, but I hope that, I pray that, but if you are a Christian, God's grace, listen to this, is working through you. Oftentimes that amazes us. It amazes me. When God uses me to share his grace with somebody else in a variety of ways. God's grace is working through you and me because of the gift of Jesus and our faith in that gift that he died on the cross to forgive our sins. And he's made us his very own child. His spiritual DNA has been put within us. And so by His grace, that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now gives us this amazing ability to share that grace with others in a thousand, thousand different ways, regardless of what you do. What you do right now, not just when you go to heaven, what you do right now in life is rooted in this eternal reality that gives you incredible freedom to worship God, not just here on Sunday morning, but every day of the week as you serve others in our community in whatever you do. Have you ever thought about what you do during the week as worship, as administering God's grace in its various forms? You see, there are a lot of people that will never set foot in this congregation, but there's people in your life who have to deal with you. They'll see you every day of the week. And so you can be a vehicle, and you are, of God's grace to them in the workplace, in the factory, playing, eating out, shopping. It doesn't matter. God can and does use you as a minister of his grace. I've met Christians who seem to be afraid, and it saddens me, to live in the freedom that Christ has won for them. As wonderful it is for them to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, they live as if there's just some sin in their life that has not been forgiven. Satan likes to do that to us. He can remind us of sins we've done last week or 10 years ago or 50 years ago and say, who do you think you are? And we can just turn that back on him. Who do you think you are? I am God's child. I am forgiven. I am justified I'm made right. I am declared innocent before God, not because of anything that I've done, but by his blood, the blood that I eat and drink through the sacrament. I am made right, and that is the past. No amount of attending the Lord's Supper for those who this hasn't quite sunk in yet. No amount of attending the Lord's Supper, and they could have done this for decades and decades and decades, seem to give them peace and assurance. They seem to carry around a burden of guilt that torments them and holds them captive rather than, as in our gospel lesson, being set free by God. If this is you this morning, I want to assure you, God wants to set you free. 
You see, Martin Luther, Luther lived like this before he finally understood God's amazing grace. He felt that there had to be just one more religious activity to complete before God would be completely satisfied with him. He found that there was never enough he could do until one day he discovered the truth of God's word and the eternal gospel. The truth was that Jesus had done it all. Faith in the completely finished work of Christ made him realize that there was nothing left for him to do and it set him free free to praise and glorify God in every single aspect of his life. And that's what he encouraged others of his day to do. It doesn't matter what you do. People thought, well, if I would just become a full-time church worker, then God would be pleased with me. He said, no. In fact, he discouraged people from doing that. Mothers, you can stay home and raise your family, and God is pleased with you. That is a, a way of administering his grace. Farmers, Farm. That's what God's called you to do. Do it in a way that administers God's grace. And he could have gone through the list. In fact, he did. There was no occupation on this earth that he didn't see as an opportunity to use the gifts that God had given men and women to serve him and their communities with this amazing gift of grace. Well, Luther's not here this morning, but my prayer is, for every person here today is that our time together hearing God's word will be empowered by the Holy Spirit so this reality will completely sink into your heart and soul right now, today. Not minutes before you die, not after you die and go to heaven, but right now. So that through faith in the completely, thoroughly finished work of Jesus Christ, God's holy gift to you, you will leave here today knowing that you are completely justified by His grace. I know that's amazing. But as amazing as this may seem, it is completely true. You are free right now to live your life in the wonder and joy that God intended. Yes, you and I have both fallen not just a little bit short, but way, 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 way short of the glory of God. But the reality is, that is in the past. That chapter of our life has been buried with Christ in baptism, and we've been raised to a brand new life with Him. A new life that no longer has to work and strive to somehow achieve a righteousness that makes God pleased with us. A new life that is no longer concerned with looking over our shoulder to see if there's just one more religious thing that we need to do before we die. As if there was just one more religious ritual that we need to observe or one more word of absolution that we need to hear. God has declared that you are forgiven. If you never hear that again from a minister the rest of your life, you can know that that is true. God has forgiven you in Christ Jesus. You are justified. Believe it. This new life, as we go forward from here today, is totally focused on the finished, fantastic word of our Savior Jesus Christ. We are set free to serve him in the wondrous glory that God intended from the creation of the world before Adam and Eve sinned. When he made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the entire universe in which we live, he intended us to live in that glorious freedom. As we think about that this Reformation Sunday, what wondrous and glorious news. The truth has set us free to be people of God, justified, made totally declared righteous, innocent, completely guilt-free, by the grace he's given us as a gift. Washed clean by the blood of Christ that we'll share here in a few min moments. Let us worship God in everything we do throughout the week, in our work, in our play, in our jobs, in our homes, in sickness and in health until that final day that he fi finally calls us home to our eternal rest. Amen? Amen.